The rounding functions are useful, but they're quite limited in the sense that you can only round to a certain number of decimal places. So you can round down to two decimal places. You can round up to one decimal place, those kind of situations. But there are other situations where you want to be able to round up to a multiple of five or a multiple of 50. And those kind of situations where round just doesn't cut it. That's where ceiling and floor functions come in. Now, ceiling goes up, floor goes down. And what you can do is to use this function to work out the closest multiple above or the closest multiple beneath. It works like this. So we've got a range of values here, so you'll see this in effect as we go down. I'll start by saying equals ceiling, open the brackets, and select the number I'm working with. It then has this thing called significance. Just read that as multiple. So what's the nearest whole number you want to round to? Let's say it's three. We close the brackets here, and when we press enter, the closest multiple of three above number one is three. And if we copy this down, you'll see how this works for all of these numbers here. So while it's one, two, and three, it remains as three. Four, five, and six, the next multiple of three up above that is six, and then nine, and then 12. So all of these down here are multiples of three, it goes to the closest. Same for the floor function. Let's say we want to go down to the closest multiple of five. We say equals floor, open the brackets, select the value we're working with, and say five as the multiple. When we press enter, for these first few, it's going to give you zero. But when it gets beyond a certain point, the closest multiple of five downwards becomes five, and then 10, and then 15, and so on as the value gets larger. That's how ceiling and floor work. Very, very powerful and very useful in the right situation. And when you need it, there's no other function that will achieve this for you.